cut every time I say daddy. Just cut every single time. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Under the Plum Bob, a podcast that's totally new and different about all things related to the EA Maxis series of games called The Sims. This has never been done before on <laughs> television. <laughs> We avoid the real world by talking about our made-up ones. Uh, and today we're going to talk about talking about made-up worlds on television. It's our Sparked Recap episode. I'm Melissa. I'm... Um, <laughs> I'm Ellie. <laughs> I'm Caitlin. And never the- do that. We never bump into each other like that. This is the first time in a really long time. And normally there's like a pause and somebody just goes like... Get- I guess we also were the original Team Llama. Do we want to talk about that first? They pinned us against each other. and <laughs> Seriously. It. Yeah. And I mean, like, oh, let's start right here right now. There will be spoilers for the entire yeah. Sims Sparked series. Um, Go watch the four episodes that are out. Go get some alcohol or some snacks or some water. Yeah. They're like. Have an, have an afternoon sub an hour each um there's also a reunion episode which to be honest first spoiler did not add anything to my life but we'll get to that (laughs) um they normally do not like no unless it's like the bad girls where they like fight each other then i'll watch it yeah those are the good ones yeah if you're not fighting i don't want to see it there was one I'm going to probably be talking about Top Chef a lot because I love it so much. Yes. But there was one time a reunion show where I think I think it was Mike Isabella where he came off like way too hard in the first couple episodes and he eventually he became someone he liked and he was like, I couldn't make it past the first episode during the reunion. I didn't watch it. I didn't like me. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but that's good content. So if you've been living under a rock or just like live like a normal person, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> the sparked the Sims sparked um, made some waves in the Sims community recently. Um, it, it's a brand new, never before done um, reality competition show based on the Sims. Um, this was a collaborative effort between EA and Maxis and I guess TBS. Buzzfeed? Oh, BuzzFeed too. Yeah. So I guess it's not super clear, but BuzzFeed definitely had a hand in producing the episodes um, for several reasons we'll get into. But one being um, episodes aired every Friday night on television, on TBS. Um, again, never done before. We are breaking ground. And I'm saying that kind of sarcastically, but it's kind of true. Like, who to thunk Sims would be on TV? Um, but, and then every, the following Monday for each episode, they would be available on BuzzFeed Multiplayer. I didn't even know that it was on TV until someone in our Discord said it. And I was very confused. Like, why the fuck is this on TV? And I also think, I said this on our Discord too, like, I don't know who thought the Venn diagram of people interested in Sims games and people interested in watching television still on cable where they thought that overlapped. I'd like to see the data, like the views who yeah, actually I, watch this shit. At, on television. Because on YouTube and BuzzFeed, that makes perfect sense. That's exactly where I watched it. I think that's where all of our patrons watched it. I don't have cable, so... Yeah, neither do I. I only have internet. I don't need cable. So I still have cable because of my job. But also, I, I feel like it's a shame because most... Most of society has moved to this, you know, content on demand world. We're watching things when we want to. YouTube is super popular. Um, But ad ad revenue is still so strong in the world of television and commercials. And I think for anything to be taken seriously, it's sort of like, oh, well, do we get ad revenue from the from the TV show aspect of it? And Mm -hmm it's it's different worlds and i think what they were trying to do is is actually get that data of like all right if we're gonna put this out there if it's 
available earlier on TV, are people going to clamor to watch it? Or is it just something they'd rather watch on demand? Now, I could if I wanted to like go through my cable on demand and watch it that way. But I'm too lazy and YouTube's usually open anyway. So it's right there. Sorry, so Sims. Easy. <laughs> so easy to access on YouTube. But the fact that and also the the, the idea of this whole thing, because if we go right into I don't know what I expected this to be when I started it, but we're going into it hearing like, oh, guess what? You have two hours to make a build and a whole story and a video. Go for it. So the first skill challenge that they had, they had an hour and a half to build uh, to build, style, and create a store, like to do so much stuff. An hour and a half for these introverted people. <laughs> yeah. There, there were a lot of aspects of like these challenges. And I think they played to different skill sets and sort of forced people into silos a little bit. Not yeah. that that's always a bad thing, but it was interesting to see like how the producer of a competition show thought making Sims competitive should look like. I also think they lied about the hours, like how long they had to do it. Cause there's no fucking way that they did all of that. Because they, like, course-corrected later. Because the first episode, they had an hour and a half for the first one and five for... But they don't... Every other challenge is longer. I think yeah. they kind of saw their mistake, especially the first skill challenge where every single storyteller, and I don't blame them at all, every single one that went up there was terrified and messed up. Almost all of them were, like, uh, uh, like freaked out. And poor Stefo Sims, like, had to, like, take a moment to calm down. <laughs> And, like, I don't blame her. Like, you don't, how often do you have to go up, if it's not your part of your job job, how often do you have to go up and be like, hello, cameras, right. hello, yeah. judges, Here's judge my, my creative thing. Most people that play video games um, are shelled little individuals who we don't like attention, we don't like speaking to people, <laughs> do not put us on TV, do not put us in groups, especially with people you don't know. Speak um, for yourself. Okay, I <laughs> do not like working with people. Says the host of a podcast. Come on. It's, okay, but like, I won't have to like be in the room with you guys. You know, <laughs> that's true. That's by walk... design. <laughs> we can be the thing and be like, "That's a later. That's I'm gonna talk to you later." Like, I love all you guys, and like, I I like talking to everyone over the internet. But if you were to put me in a room with you guys, I would shit my pants and would not say a fucking word. I would cry. Like, no. Like, okay, fun fact. Um, this is going to be hella embarrassing for me. But when we first started this podcast, we had an initial meeting. I was at the first meeting, and I dipped. It was my turn really? to say who the fuck I was, and I left. I was like, no, <laughs> I cannot do this. I am too socially awkward for this. And then my boyfriend, like, yelled at me. He's like, no, you're going to do this because you like the game, and you'll have fun. So the next day, we had a second meeting with, like, everyone who couldn't attend the first meeting, and I attended that one, and I actually spoke that time. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good job. And look where it got you. Yay. <laughs> just face your fear sometimes. You might cry a little bit, but it's okay. Just just have somebody yell at you to be like, you'll have a good time. I fucking promise. <laughs> Turn the fuck back around. It's like my mom making me go to summer camp. You're yeah, going to have fun. Just go. I'm weeping at drop off. And by the time she comes to pick me up, I'm like, I never want to leave. I'm a star here. People anyway. Adore me here. I get praise. <laughs> But yeah, but the time frames A alone caused me instant anxiety for all of them because I don't understand like, wh what an hour and a half to do all the sh shit they did for the first challenge is too short of a time. And, and didn't the team that got eliminated, didn't they create sets instead of like an actual build? Freezer because did, did a set. and They, they kind did of got, sets. Which I thought which was I smart. I thought was really smart and they got eliminated I think for that reason but no. every other subsequent challenge people did sets no because I, I I was knowing we were doing this I was like quickly like jumping to all the end, end of challenges bits to remind myself what happened freezer bunny didn't finish their their emulate, el, elimination I'm gonna do it again 
Fraser Bunny didn't finish their elimination challenge video. So their voiceover stuff, oh. they just like typed in the text what they meant what they were going to say. Oh. They didn't no. finish. But they did get <laughs> called out in the skill challenge for doing sets and i was like right super smart though like why yeah i thought it was really smart i I skipped the first episode so (laughs) i didn't know if it was was something i was gonna want to watch because the concept to me was kind of dumb um (laughs) melly (laughs) it's unique it's never been done before you'll never see (laughs) as someone who watches a lot of trash reality tv i i beg to differ (laughs) Oh, I will also say Llama is not doing this episode because Llama is the team that won. Llama dibs this episode as soon as it was announced because all but of us were like... But maybe it is! Hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Although I was were... anti-team Llama. I was not reading for your See, team. Me I, too! I liked Cowplant more, although I don't mm-hmm. think they... Sh- I think they might have probably should have gotten eliminated in episode three, but that's... Hmm. That's, an- that's another thing. But I... Yeah. We've gotten in, we've, we've dove in and I want to have these conversations, but I want to zoom out just for a second. Um, If you're here, if you've made it this far, you know what's up, but um, let's kind of talk about the judges and like the teams and like the people on the teams before we get too in the weeds. So our host, Rayvon Owen, is someone that I had to Google. Um, Okay. (laughs) I would love to hear him sing. I did not know that he was on American Idol. He's a dream. He's so cute. He is. I was like, who is? I just assumed he was just somebody they hired or like a, a BuzzFeed, another BuzzFeed employee they got. Right. But he has played Sims. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> Good for him. <laughs> <laughs> he played Sims one time. <laughs> you, can, you look cute and turn on this game. Congratulations. But like, so in the... In the reunion that I said did not add anything to my life, he, like, talked about, he's like, I remember when I was playing at home, my mom would be over my shoulder, like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, yes, we can all relate to that. Good job, Rayvon. Definitely not wahooing everybody. Uh, for judges, we had uh, a wide scope of individuals. You've got Dave Miyoki, who uh, is known on the tweets as Simguru Ninja. Um, he's done a couple Maxis monthlies, and, yeah. like... He tweets all the time. He, I think it was today at the time of this recording, was tweeting out some some teaser nonsense about a parenthood upgrade pack for Causing Sims 4. unnecessary drama and then just being like, you know what, I'm just going to go. And you're like, what? You did this. This was you. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> if you have to pay for it, I'll be pissed. That's all he knows exactly what he's doing. God bless. Um, also a judge, Kelsey Impeachake. You might know her as uh, Chelsea Impeachishme on her BuzzFeed 100 Baby Challenge. Um, I will say, like, I love her. Um, her 100 Baby Challenge, I think, is what convinced me to at least attempt 100 Baby Challenge again. It's pretty entertaining. She's very entertaining. I like her a lot. I have not watched one of her videos, so she's so pretty she, she's so pretty and she you can tell she's i don't think she's played sims 4 a ton because a lot of stuff is new to her yeah. which is fun to watch her learn new things about the yes game as that's you go, it which is inter- you're just like oh Kel- you didn't know oh kelsey what do you find yeah. out about this other thing you're gonna lose your shit yeah oh god bless uh and our final judge is taylor parks she's a singer songwriter who i also had to google but she was she's a featured voice actress in the sims 4 so if you choose one of the voices for your sims uh if you play with the sound on which i do not sorry taylor um (laughs) she's a voice of the sims and i think some of her songs are in the game as well yes they are i think she they said that she's like the only person to have both of be a voice and a song featured but there's only how, how many voices do they have that are also singers? It's like that can't be a wide margin. Flarnish newbie. So, contestants, we've got Team Gnome, which they uh, did randomly assign. They got there. It looks like they randomly split them up into who's building, who's they split them up into the groups, and they just pulled out little. Yeah. So they've got all these contestants, and they I think they they team them up randomly, but they based on like how each person plays yeah. um, and like what they're known for online, um, categorize them into storyteller, stylist, or builder. And each team got one of those roles. Um, 
Team Gnome had the English Simmer as their storyteller, Plumbella as their stylist, and Sim Proved as their builder. Team Freezer Bunny had X Urban Sims X as their stylist, Spring Sims as their builder, and D Sims as their storyteller. Team Llama had X Mira Mira as their stylist, Simlessy as their builder, and Dr. Gluon as their storyteller. Team Cowplant had Little Siha as their stylist, Dr. Ashley as their builder, and Stefo Sims as their storyteller. Uh, in the finale, she had to bow out of the competition and was replaced by the English Simmer as Team Cowplant's storyteller. Mm-hmm. So now that we've gotten all those names out there, just I just wanted to like set the stage and now we can talk about all of these people. I didn't know who majority of these people were other than Steffo Sims. I, I am obsessed with her. Um, I find that her play style is very similar to mine. We just fuck around and do whatever the fuck we want. <laughs> She's very raunchy. So if you like proper <laughs> pe- she seems play, so cute. you're not going to like her content her. at all. But I, I enjoy her. Little Siha had like the prettiest turquoise hair during the re- during the recording of this vid of this, and I kept being like, "It's so pretty. It looks so good on you." Every time she showed up, I was like, "Oh, look at your- how pretty your hair is." Yeah, I oh. love her hair. I mean, I knew about Plumbella kind of vaguely. I knew English Simmer. I knew I knew X Mira Mira. We featured her actually as one of our favorite content creators. X Mira Mira is the user who created the melanin pack. Yes. Um, Props to her. They should probably hire her. Yeah. To do the problem that needs to get fixed because she's already fixed. They could hire a lot of these people. And actually, in the reunion that I said didn't add anything to my life, they did talk about (laughs) the fact that, like, so Simguru Ninja Dave kind of said, like, basically what you guys did is like development testing. Um, Like, you played through a lot of our content and sort of you know stretched the possibilities of what the game is capable of that's development testing so honestly if the you know this was all could be development testers Hmm? think if that's what development testing is we could do that. hell yeah let's be development oh my god absolutely i would love to do that i just i think that like i think any of these these players um they were all very worthy of being on the show um yes for you know all that was thrown at them uh, and I think they all had a really good showing of of content what they were able to make mm-hmm. and it was very mixed some of these people aren't youtubers um, some of them are strictly twitch streamers mm-hmm. so when it comes to like coming up with stories on the spot and stuff they had the upper hand because with streaming you don't have time to uh, edit and do all of that kind of stuff but it's also a big disadvantage because you don't have that time to plan. It's a different mode of storytelling things. for sure. And I posted this in the Discord chat. Um, it was kind of the time that I realized Dr. Gluon's strength was in the streaming, in the off the cuff, like kind of silly storytelling, which there's absolutely value in. Um, but in terms of like overall storytelling, I think most of the competition was geared toward creating a video, which truly he is not good at. (laughs) Well, not good. He just doesn't. He doesn't have to do it. Yeah, and that's not his style. I think even X X Mira Mira brought it up during the the one that the first one that they won in episode two. What what the one where she got to actually tell her story, where she was like, "I'm gonna do my thing." She brought up to him, like, you stream, and when you stream, you can kind of make this, whatever the Sims do, you kind of backtrack right. and make it work in your story. Right. And that's not how this works. Yeah. And it's. When you make a video. And like I said, it's a completely valid form of storytelling. It's just, it's it a different way. And so I think in future seasons, if they happen, I would like to see more allowance toward that form of storytelling. I don't particularly watch either. I, I, like, I don't watch a ton of Sims YouTube um, other than Kelsey and Peach K, but her stuff is very pre-produced and post content. And, and it's it's that YouTube style of content, not so much. Uh, but I mean, her comedy, honestly, is that like of a streamer and she streams, too. So it's interesting to see how, if at all, that was an influence to how the show 
went down. I think they edited some of their stuff as they went along. Like the time frames, like notice going back and like looking at like the time frames got longer the more episodes they did because I think they realized they made a mistake up front making the making it so short. But also I think the uh, skill challenge that happened in episode three for the storytellers was them kind of giving a hand to Dr. Gluon because I think they might have realized oh, we're not playing to you, like, you stream, and we're not playing to you at all. And it was kind of giving him an upper hand in that challenge when he didn't have it in any of the other challenges. And I kind of think they adjusted. I'll be real honest. I was not a fan early on. I was no. like, this white guy in a dumb hat, I'm sorry, <laughs> this dumb guy, this white guy in a dumb hat is, like, taking talking over Mira Mira and and just not letting either of them have their say and have their peace. It was that skill challenge that I realized, okay, he his brain is working in a different way and seeing this in a different way. So like I came around to you, Dr. Gluon. Um, I'll give I'll give your channel a watch, but I still don't really understand the Fez. But you know what? That's that's on you. That is your that is your prerogative. <laughs> and I do think them not knowing going in this was going to be a group thing. Oh, yeah. That changes. They didn't know it was going to be a you were going to be in a group the entire time. And also, did they know that they were going to be sharing the 100000 Like, the the first episode I went, so it was $100,000 for all of them? Yeah, that or, was not cause... clear. And I was like, so I think it's... by the end of this, they're going to, you know, whittle it down to one person, right? That's what I guess thought. Guess not. Too. Nope. <laughs> Melly, I wanted to let you have your say in, in the Dr. Glue on thing. I didn't want to breeze past Ugh. that. Okay. <clears throat> Great. She's made an opinion. <laughs> she said it. Let me know. That was her opinion. That's it. I just didn't like how he kept talking over people, and he came off as a know-it-all. I hate people like that. And he kept trying to take lead into something he had no fucking idea about. I, I truly feel that they lost the first challenge because of him. Yeah. No, I, so if yeah. he would just like take a step back and let other people give their input, then maybe you would succeed earlier on. But I'm glad that they figured it out yeah. towards the end. That's what I want to give them the credit for. Like they did figure it out. They did, you know, they were able to make more of a of a team effort. But teams are hard. Teams are hard. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, somebody in our Discord mentioned like he like – Maybe he just went like the social cute because they don't know each other. They're three strangers coming together for this unknown project. You don't know each other's social cues yet. And like that giving like just a bit of a maybe he just wasn't picking up on the social cues that he was just not letting anybody talk. I'm willing to bet that this is this was advertised as a like, are you a simmer? Like, come, it'll be a competition show. I bet the whole team aspect was not kind of spoken yeah. about. Um, and I bet that any of the people signing up for, to do this, if they knew it was a team thing, would be like, nah, I'm out. I really do. And I, I, and I wouldn't blame them. If there is a season two, I hope they let them come with their own teams already. Like that would I be- hope that it's not content creators, though. Like, let other people who aren't known in the same sure. community blossom and make a platform for themselves. I don't want to watch great. people that already have a platform. Like, in my face, you know? If I want to watch you, I'll watch you on your individual channel. Mm -hmm. I would love it as not a team thing, honestly. Like, I feel like the team thing was for the sake of timing. Like, they probably knew, like, all right, we got four episodes to make this happen. I feel like it could be sort of, like... (sighs) I'm going to America's Next Top Model because that's the competition show that <laughs> holds a very special place in my heart. But, like, some girls are really good at photo shoots and really bad at runway. They still have to do the runway stuff. Like, I feel like I would go in there and be like, look, I'm kind of figuring out building. I can style fairly well. And my strength is storytelling. But, like, that would have to be the complete package. And if they had, like, a day, like six to eight hours to like come up with a something whether it's a you know a a one hour or or, or not one hour a like a two minute video or like they set whatever up for a live stream and have to perform that like I want I want every individual to have to answer for all the different ways you can play sims because honestly like this podcast 
doing some of the challenges for this show pulled me out of my Sims comfort zone and forced me to do something different. And I really liked it. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. I learned something new, you know, I want that for others. Some of these competitors actually could have pulled off doing all three because like x mira mira kind of took over oh God, like the, story, totally. the storytelling thing and also i think that the builders time crunch was the they felt the time crunch the hardest but i feel yeah. like the stylists like had maybe had the easiest job mm-hmm. out of yeah. all of them it's, it's like, not that hard to dress in it's no really and especially when so, they probably couldn't use custom content right so, so like, like limited like, options so if they could get somebody, which I don't think would be too hard, finding somebody who could attempt to do all three things wouldn't be that hard. Although I do think our group could probably, we actually have, I style, I could style, Melissa could build and, no, Melly could build and Melissa could be storytelling, but help with build. We could actually be a team. <laughs> we could be a dope ass team. <laughs> We're our own spark challenge. Yeah. Plum Bob edition. It would just end up with all of us crying at the end. It wouldn't be great, but we could maybe get something done. <laughs> the completionist maybe we do, in all of us. Maybe we actually... do a stream of. I mean, we have three teams technically. Mm-hmm. We have Cowplant, Social Bunny, and Llama. We can make our own. Oh yeah, and Cowplant. Will we all have... hate each other after the episode? Maybe we but already like, do. It's yellow. fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. But I think I agree because at first when you started talking about like they'll find one person and, and me thinking like, well, I don't build. I could never. But you're right. There are people who can do all three. And there were some people in these in these groups who showed that they could possibly do all of them. Because even X Mira Mira, like when also Sim Lissy got totally she just kind of disappeared behind into the, the drama. Yeah. Into the yeah. background was not featured as she should have been. I feel like she got a bum deal with that um, tour bus. Simlissy who? I, exactly. Like her bus was really great, but they tore it apart because they, because she interpreted the challenge a little bit differently than they Yeah. It was had. nice, but it did not fit the theme. And the yeah, other person made all. a freaking time machine. Like she stood. Which no like, what a cop out. <laughs> What a cop out. An alternate way of travel, traveling through time, boom. Like a cop out, a brilliant cop out, but a cop out nonetheless. And Dr. Ashley is one of my favorites. I thought she was awesome. And I didn't know about her before this. All the builds were amazing. And especially, uh, who was the team? No, it's improved. Like, holy shit. How did you make that house in an out, like less than an hour and a half for their Insane. first challenge? It was nuts. It was so deep. Like, what the hell? Uh, Julia would have to be on someone's team. She could probably do it. She pulls out builds in like two hours. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like everyone has the opportunity to be all three of those categories. Builder, storyteller, stylist. And I feel like it was kind of a miss on the EA Max's team to not be like, here you go. If your strength is storytelling, use some of our pre-styled looks to help tell your story. Like, that's part of it. And if you don't build... Here's some of the pre-made rooms you can use and tweak and change. Like, and it, and so they're going in there and the d- judges can say, your storytelling was great, but we noticed you used some pre-made rooms and didn't really make them your own kind of thing. Like, th- like you'd have to be judged on the sum of all of the, all of the parts. So. How well you adapt to a situation. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They also kept throwing in the twists for the Ugh, thing. No, like that, I, like <laughs> in a regular competition show, I'm like, yes, bring the twist. That's adapting to your surroundings, but not when the time crunch is already like horrendous. Although sometimes it made it better. What was the, the supernatural sure. one where Lam, Lam, what? Which, which one was it? Oh, was, oh, also they freaking drafted. I immediately, I stopped <laughs> the episode and I messaged, because I didn't know Melly was watching at the time. So I like, I knew Melissa was watching. I was like, did you watch Sparked yet? And she's like, no, not yet. And I was like, can I spoil something for you? They drafted. <laughs> what Amazing. the hell? Like, call us. EA if, Maxis, BuzzFeed, call us. We're right hey, here. Call us next time. Yeah. If not for COVID and uh, Ke- Kelsey's hair not being red that it is right now <laughs> and it's blonde, I was like, I would have sworn that they are listening, that they were like, somebody is somebody on our team works for EA or something because what the hell? 
Who's, who's the spy among us? It's, who would have? It's Marissa. I tell you, she scares me. Mm-hmm. She's too powerful. She's the most powerful <laughs> of us all. So do we want to go through and like, not that I'm not saying we, we're we out of things to talk about, but would we want to talk <laughs> about like, like the cha- each of the challenges and like maybe how we would have done them or? We can do that. Yes, and let's also speak on the last episode. I have That's, a lot. yeah, I Ooh, definitely want to talk the finale. Episode. Freaking thoughts. So let's make so. our way through the to the finale by way of each challenge. So the first challenge was that style build and create a story featuring three random items of inspiration i really like that one um Mm -hmm. i feel like that's you can be really creative with those um and i mean it would depend on the the items you grabbed but interesting choices were made let's just say the i do agree like that was one of the things like llama and freezer bunny like i agreed with these choices like they kind of deserve to be on the bottom Mm -hmm. but i think uh one second i wrote yeah do you have notes on what they what items each team had oh yeah if you click the first one that's my own like i what i was doing when i got off of work to do the thing uh so llama had guitar bubbles and fishing rod and they did like a fisherman who wants to impress his daughter wants to go to a concert but they can't afford to go so he puts a show on for his daughter and the bubbles were pretty much not used at all. Right. Which was Well, so like that choice. was very much Gluon's like stream of consciousness storytelling. It's yes. like, well, it could be this and then this and then that. And it's like, well, no, no, no. Zoom out, bigger picture, find out how they could all interact and then make a story. And uh, Team Gnome had Urn, Cherry Blossom, Tree, Voodoo Doll, and they had an old woman who adopts two kids, and they're using the Voodoo Dolls to make them do her bidding. Yeah, that one was pretty dark and great. This build, that, and that build was Nutso Pants, and it was really detailed, and I think, I was typing because I forgot who won this challenge, like, honestly, the build saved them from being on the bottom, and I don't think they should have won. I think Cowplant should have actually taken this one. They're the, they Cowplant had a mirror stereo in bed, and they had a stage mom, and she had a pageant child who doesn't want to be. She wants to go to soccer. Who wants to be soccer? And like I thought, they did the best with the challenge, and they had the clearest storyline. Because Team Gnome's thing was just like, look, they used the voodoo doll, and we're done. Ta-da. Like they had all the elements, but I don't know that their story was tied together as well right. as Cowplant. I agree. And so I was kind of surprised that. Uh, gnome won that i didn't think they deserved that win uh team freezer bunny they got the microphone the camera and the books and they probably that's super their streamlined thought was very of course you did that teenage girl wants to be a famous singer but her parents are strict they want her to be a lawyer um and i had the, i and the, he made the three separate sets which was I really that for liked. the elimination challenge or for the no. the uh, skill, skill challenge, challenge. But they had to use the rooms in the elimination challenge, right? No. No. Never mind. They didn't get eliminated because of the <laughs> because They of just the didn't thing. finish their... See, like, there's so many components. As someone who edits um, not only this podcast, but, like, videos and, like, there is a lot that goes into editing a video that's... I mean, I don't know what the time limit to the video was, but it was probably, like, one to two minutes, probably. Oh, Yeah. I don't know what it was. Conceptualizing a story and, and knowing all the shots that you have to get and then condensing that down. In five hours. In five hours? Absolutely not. It's too much. It's too much. They were given an editor. Who, uh, can I just say, all of the editors who worked on this show, I feel like deserve a medal. And like, yeah. <laughs> I wanted them to be like specially credited at the end because they all looked so stressed. Like, I don't know if anyone was like, yelling at them particularly but they just seemed so like like uh, like they looked like they hadn't been sleeping like leading up to this they were brought in and they were like can you edit this in 10 minutes and you're like well fuck it was like it was like four buzzfeed employees who were like what are we doing today oh shit (laughs) so they got editors but for their thing like they had everybody had voiceover but when they got to their video for the elimination challenge the like they just kind of they typed they wrote in like oh 
glad you're here, honey. And then there was just like no voiceover. So it's obviously that they didn't finish when everybody yeah. else had had done the job. And that's kind of an easy pick. Yeah, for that's fair. We haven't mentioned up till this point Spring Sims, right? Hang on. Yes. Spring Sims and Dr. Gluon were the only male participants uh, of mm-hmm. the show which says a little bit about the makeup of who is playing The Sims. Um, Not definitively, but, I mean, we're also a podcast of all women, so um, it's just interesting. Female listeners. Right. So that's not to say that determines anything, but it's definitely interesting to see. I mean, just as a standalone fact that, like, something that has such a female following was funded and made into a show that that's why i still think that like even though the concept may not have been executed perfectly or you know given the right amount of attention like it is still really important that this came to be you know what i mean there's something there and it can definitely be tweaked to be better which i really hope they do it is just these are this game like to me like it's so a it's so like you do it by yourself for the most part or it's you you're it's an internal game a lot and it's a lot of like but i guess well Well, so like that's where i go back to like the teams is a real you know wrench in the whole situation because when you play the only person you have to justify your story to is yourself now with a team you have to justify it to two other people and then be believe in it enough to stand in front of judges i kind of just wish that 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 middle step was eliminated and yeah standing in front of judges is really hard but that's that to me is enough of a competition piece not necessarily because because god like being group projects just stress me the fuck out i'm sorry (laughs) I'm sorry. Like, I felt... Everyone has different play styles, so... Exactly. my story may be dark and uh, morbid, my teammate might be peppy-go-lucky with flowers Mm -hmm. and rainbows, and trying to make that into one, it's not going to work out. Yeah. There is no death and flowers. It's not going to happen. Persephone would disagree with you. (laughs) Mythology. Word. Moving on. (laughs) It's a challenge for sure, but I think it's a challenge that didn't need to be there, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And also, they might not have had enough money. Oh, no, I guess that's the same amount of money if you give it to one person as opposed to three. Never mind. So, like, 30 grand each per person, right? Did I do that math right? It's not nothing. It's not nothing. It's not nothing. It's more than I have. That's right. It's fine. I'll take it. Drop the bucket for the student loans, but the student loans... But the chunk I don't have to pay nonetheless. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, that was just the skills challenge. Right. And then after, so nobody gets eliminated in the skills challenge. It's the quick fire of, of this one. I don't understand. They didn't differentiate the skills challenge and the elimination challenges enough to me. Agree. Until episode three. There wasn't a big difference, which is why I had trouble like, yeah. separating them in my brain a lot, which I understand like, why you are too. Like There isn't a big difference between them. I agree. And the elimination challenge was make a family of four. And then, so Gnome won that one, which I don't think they should have won. I don't think their story was as clean as Cowplants was. Uh, The elimination challenge was make a family of four Sims with a home in Willow Creek with a backstory that explains their relationship to each other. They had five hours. They were given an editor. Uh, The winners get the family featured in the game, and the twist create a rival family of Sims from a different neighborhood. Gnome had an advantage. They got to pick the neighborhood the rival family was from for their own team and the other teams as well. Team Gnome won. Freezer Bunny went home. Bye. And who did what? Llama did... uh like a battle over an empty lot where one family wants to build a garden and the other one wants to build a plant. Uh, X Mira Mira was correct when she said like, this was all over the place. There was no, our story was not <laughs> cohesive. Gnome did dad works too much. So the mom leaves with the daughter who's narrating the story. The mom finds a friends and they get into gardening and the dad comes back. 
to help with the gardening. It made more sense in the video, which is good. It should. <laughs> that was like um, the two old ladies that had the farm. Yes. That's the other thing. Like there were storytelling. There was storytelling that was very explicit and there was storytelling that was very like kind of implied. And I don't know if it was edited that way in the video or if it was edited that way for the show. So like a team's final video might not have been as impactful as it was shown to be in the final edit of like us watching it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, like we didn't get to see the full final product. We saw an edited final product. Right. Maybe we don't. We don't actually know. I would like some confirmation if we saw the full mm -hmm. video they made or not. Even if it was like, yeah, like I don't think it was everybody's full video, but was it cut down? Because it was, yeah, like some of the voiceover was played when we didn't see the visual that they used. So mm -hmm. definitely a discrepancy there for the viewer. Because I feel like you could have less of them freaking out about editing ah. and getting the job done and more of the end product and then just put a little window of their reaction and or and the judges so we can see both like both reactions at the bottom but still enjoy the video because I want to see the end product like that's part of like the fun of all these challenge like any food competition thing or fashion or modeling we get to see the end product and we get to be like couch judges and be like mm -hmm. yeah I didn't like that or, she should have used her angle better she didn't catch the light with her face like <laughs> but us not seeing the end product in full right I think could that could be also an easy fix for them yeah, a little less talky talky, more seeing seeing. Mm -hmm. And like, if it was like a RuPaul's Drag Race situation where there's drama behind the scenes and like crosstalk on the team, then yeah, I'll watch that. But it was all people who are a introverts, b very kind to each other. <laughs> like they were all friends. They were friends. That was one problem with the whole um, Plum Bella English Simmer being like BFFs at Stethel Sims. That fucked everything up. But we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> we will get to that later. Um, Cow Plants had that Gossip Girl video, which I liked a lot. That actually was my favorite video. They had a whole Gossip Girl storyline happening. Which yeah, I that one was, was pretty cool. Um. And Team Freezer Bunny had a family bond that cannot even be broken during death. And that's the one, like, they didn't finish. They didn't have their voiceover during the second half. So you kind of just had to use the video to try to follow what was going on, I think. It was kind of a mess at the end. It was a good try. It was. But I think Cow Plant... Buh, 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 buh. I think Gnome won because they showed the most gameplay with the video. They showed the most, and look, you can garden in The Sims. Oh, look, you can sell your garden. Ah, like, they had a yeah. lot of gameplay options. And I did kind of get the feeling from that of, like, oh, I hope this isn't, like, an ad for The Sims every episode, you know? Because I do mm -hmm. feel like that was pushed a little bit in the first episode, but I think they got away from that more as, as the series went on, which I appreciate. So. And Dave got a little, he was super rough in the beginning, like super, I was like, dude, yeah. you gotta, like, because especially like the first couple, the first presentation, the presenters were kind of freaking out. And they were like, the story was all over the place. You didn't tell it great. And it's like, well, they're freaking out. Let them calm down. <laughs> also, like, this in his stressful. defense, in daddy's defense, um, he, oh. we'll get there. <laughs> He comes from, like, a corporate environment. And honestly, uh, like, if you don't have public speaking skills, even just, like, the base level of public speaking skills in that world, like, go home. You know? Like, that's just the reality. I'm not saying it's right, but, like, he he's coming from a place of, like, no, we're working adults. You should be able to at least stand in front of four people. I mean, plus crew and all of the other contestants, but... The you know, it, it, watching from upstairs, <laughs> his his expectations were probably a little bit too high. And I do think he adjusted those as time went on, as he got to know the contestants and everything. Yeah, I think the whole them being um, influencers played a big part in that. For sure. Like he maybe translated it as since you have an audience and a platform, 
this should be a piece of cake for you. It's not the same, it's though. Not. It's not the same, exactly. It's not the same. Talking to your camera where the people watching you are just words typed on a computer, which doing stuff, even in front of, like, two people is terrifying. That's why, Oh yeah. like, actors, like, presenting stuff in front of an audience, they're, they always seem like, oh, my God, look at all the people. Because, yeah, movie actors are not prepared for a live audience. They don't know. <laughs> Different skill set. Take the stage. So the skill challenge, they had to create three Sims growing up with unique rooms. So a Sim in their, what, toddler, child, and teen phases? Yeah, I think they could pick the phases, but I think everybody went with child, toddler, child, teen. Okay. So for the skill challenge in episode two, um, with the aging, um... Team Llama uh, does this orphanage spellcaster story that I ended up really liking. Um, I liked it too. I, I think that like this was like the real show of the conflict between Dr. Gluon and X Mirror Mirror. And when I say conflict, I mean it in like the truest sense. Like nobody was taking things personally. They were just Mm-mm. they were just not used to working together. They were not compatible. And I don't think Dr. Gluon was as like I don't think he realized. Yeah. X Mirror Mirror was frustrated. And I don't He's very oblivious. Yeah. So oblivious. <laughs> I don't think the social cues were there for him to like I don't think he caught the social cues of like she is not, she seems upset. No. Maybe you should listen to her. Yeah. And so again, like I was frustrated there too, but I, I think it became clear in his like just style in general throughout the competition. Um mm-hmm. but like it like they pulled it off really well. Um because I think because when they got uh, judged, there was like, oh, there's a couple holes in your story. And some of the suggestions that X Mirror Mirror gave would have filled up those holes. I was just like, she just stumbles into a small shop. Ta-da! It's like, yeah. she could get adopted. No, I wanted to run away. It's like, okay. <laughs> chill, man. Chill. And did Sim Lucy just not have an opinion? Was that... that I was just so confused. I think she by that. wanted to avoid the conflict. Yeah, she's like, "I'm here, but I'm not here." There was enough <laughs> battling of ideas going on that I think she was like, "Yep, whatever you guys need me to do," and like, I appreciate that. <laughs> appreciate that stance. Cal Plant did a lovely story about a boy who was into makeup and was a little bit different than the other kids. Um. Yeah, I don't. I, some uh, across the board, I think storytelling for the entire show was just like a little milk toast, because um, it's hard. Because, because it, it was just how were they supposed to like do it in the time? Like, I don't blame them at all for like the time frame is not so pants. And you're like that idea sounds like we can pull it off in this amount of time, so we're gonna do that one. It was the show asking. A bunch of people with very different methods and techniques of expressing themselves to fit inside one box. Um, and I think they did well generally with what they were given, but that I think is where the disconnect was felt the most. And I think the judges started to get that, which I appreciate. Yeah. And I don't think for their idea, because they wanted, it sounded like they wanted to make bullying the highlight of the like, main conflict of the story, but it was not, they didn't stress on it enough. It wasn't it didn't seem like that big of a comment. It's like, and then he got over it and he went to university and you're like, okay. That's not how it happens in real life. <laughs> no, you hold that in you forever. And then you, you go on with your, you do go on in your life, but it's there always. Team Gnome for this skill challenge, um, they told a really moving story, in my opinion, of the Northeastern England minor strike. Um, I think the three of them were all from either like, European or Scandinavian countries um, and they pulled from this very real historical event to tell their story and I really liked it. It works really well and it plus having an idea of like you know it's in the 70s or 80s so you can do a color palette you know the color palette it gave you Mm -hmm. something to work off of so you didn't have to be like and I'm just building this uh, poof out of my brain you could work off of something. There was storytelling in every aspect, not just, it wasn't just the job of the storyteller to tell the story. There was storytelling in the build. There was storytelling in the style. Mm-hmm. And Cowplant won this 
one, which I don't think they should have. I think they should have gone to no. The skill challenges are really when I disagreed with the judges most of the time, I found. I was like, I don't know about that one, but it doesn't mean anything, so it's fine. Because it's like, what's a <laughs> skill? It's That's the same thing. It's like a skill determined by someone else based on a thing you do for fun. It's like, wait a minute, you're not having fun the right way. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> let me do my thing. <laughs> Just let me do also, it. Also, what skill are we like particularly judging? Because everyone right. has different skills. Exactly. So whose skill is better than whose at what like at what level? It's it's just confusing, and that shouldn't even be because if category. you if you do take it to individual people, then you could actually focus. You're gonna focus on this thing. You're gonna focus like you're exactly. gonna build a sim going through these stages. You're gonna focus on this build. You're gonna be given sims, and you're gonna be given a house, and you have to build a story. Like, there's different things you could do with the skilled stuff. Which BuzzFeed, if you call us. We got ideas. Let us help you. Let us help you. Let us help you. I'm sorry and that I they, cut you off. Then they drafted. Caitlin is big mad. Draft, draft. I wasn't mad. I was just like, especially after being like, especially coming out for the first episode where they go, ah, they use Team Llama and Team Cow Plan and Team uh, the Bunny, the Freezer Bunny too. That's hilarious. And then the second episode was like, they drafted? We drafted? What the hell? I wasn't mad. I was just like, that's hilarious. If you want to know... We did that. <laughs> we did that. If you want to know which... Uh, which teams picked what go watch the episode but i think the the team that was eliminated was mostly penalized for not featuring the pack that they yes. were given or chose um yes and i, I think, think that, that makes sense that saved <laughs> that saved uh cow plant a lot because cow plant's video was kind of a mess to be honest like it, it makes sense it was the thing Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was weird. Like, it makes sense in hindsight, but I don't think that was clearly communicated. Like, it no. was it was very much like, tell the story, blah, blah, blah. But I don't I don't know if th that's exactly what you're saying. Like, the best story didn't necessarily win. The best use of the packs won, which is a, a pivot from what they've been told up till this point. Because the challenge they... Uh... Yeah, because the, the challenge that they were told, like, exactly were, use only those packs to create a short video inspired. They weren't told to feature those three packs. Right. Just got to use them. But I do think they only did it, I think the only Strangerville thing, I don't remember any, was the, was it the Tiki Mass? What? I can't remember anything in their story that involved Strangerville. Me neither. <laughs> Which is like that that stuff like that gets you sent home on reality television. That's why I wasn't upset about that. I was like, that gets you sent home. Yeah. But I mean truly, Cow Plants was a hot mess. And it could have been so good. Because yeah, they their played idea off of that. Was great. They played but... off of the gossip girl thing again, which I I think is fine to kind of like repeat a theme if you're gonna execute it well. But they didn't they did they had like a gossip girl Charlie's Angels with mermaids idea that was gonna happen. That and was like murder. I was excited for that, but it was just a hot, it was unclear. It was like you were on drugs when you watched it. It was, <laughs> <laughs> wasn't sure what you watched. But X Mira Mira finally got to do her idea. And it was amazing. It was, that was a good little short story packed in to, it was the, the, the socialite who wants to get younger. So then she goes and finds, she becomes a vampire to the age she finally got to do her thing. Yeah. And it And even the other simmers were like, oh shit. <laughs> like you could when during the reactions, like yeah. they're like, oh my god, this is so good. The vision was clear and she was allowed to execute on it. And truly, I mean, truly she's unstoppable. And I love her maybe the most out of everyone who competed. Mm-hmm. And her streams are really fun too. I do like her streams. So, episode three. This was the, like, skills by... Head to head. Yeah, skills by type challenge, so to speak. But I would have liked to see more in the head to head, in the skill yeah. challenge. So, I don't know. I feel like... So, let's go by skill. For building, it, it just... Simlicis was great. Dr. Allison's was 
amazing. Yeah, she. Sh- I, I felt so bad. Like, did not stand a chance. Like, there was no. After they showed her build, I was like, "Oh, that girl lost her. She lost her team some points because I don't. Yeah. You just. I don't know if you can beat that. Like, it was great, but Doctor Ashley thought so far out of the box that it wasn't. It wasn't even a competition. And I feel like they slammed her too much for resort i can see i guess that was explicitly said that you're just supposed to you're supposed to make a form of transportation using unconventional items and she made a school bus but then she made a house inside which they didn't ask her to do with her comfort zone she did she played it really really safe yeah but she i don't know she interpreted it a different way which when we all play the sims is not penalized (laughs) you know (laughs) and maybe that's a handoff with being in a competition show but I don't know. I I felt like she kind of, this was her opportunity to make herself stand out because up until this point, um, she was being carried by her other two. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. She didn't. She just did not rise to the occasion. And for that, she's going home. (laughs) It was a cute build. I really did like, it was cute inside and it was cute outside. It just didn't adhere directly to the challenge and your competitor made a time machine. Yeah. There was no win. And that's kind of basic. A school bus? Like, really? It's been Ooh. done. I'll say that. But I still liked it. It's just Dr. Allison's was so much better. I mean, it was nice, but, like, for a competition, I would not have gone with a school bus. An airplane, for fuck's sakes. Maybe that would have won her the challenge. I was just going to say, what would you have done if you had uh, had this challenge? A blimp. Oh. Blimp. Well, Tell me how, how you would have you- done that. No idea. <laughs> so I'll work on it and I'll come back to you. What, do you know what you would have made, Melissa? So my immediate thought was to take the train toy, um, scale that up real big, and then kind of try to replace the the items that way. That's why I like 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 build something around it and like replace all of the aspects yeah and and just like use that as the reference um so that's why i'm kind of like having like i feel for simlessy because i think i would have interpreted it the same way like i don't know that i would have gone travel time travel um (laughs) but like i probably would have made the train as like a trolley car or you know what i mean like something i might have made it a living space so I don't know. I don't build. I wouldn't have done this challenge. <laughs> That's why I would have interpreted it. If you had done the cast challenge where each stylus was able to create their own collection, how would you have handled that? That's something I think I'd have to open cast and be like, what piece of item connects to me right now? And we're just going to have to forward that through. Like, it'd have to be like, what's moving me at this moment? Because they'd have to, because part of also what I think hurt, uh, part of what I think uh, hurt little Siha a lot is there wasn't a cohesiveness to her, enough of a cohesiveness in the outfits. Yeah. Then I, I think that hurt her. So it would have had to be, we're going to pick one aspect of a, like, at least one bold color or one bold, like, or one piece of, like, a skew item and have everything be a skew like that. You'd have to find like angles. Like I'd maybe right. would have played off of angles. So you could keep so I could have that one uh dress from uh get famous that's like got the slit up to here but it's got the kind of the angle top. So like I I mean shirt. I liked her concept. I liked her concept and Mira's concept. I think Little Siha really got dinged on not having enough diversity. And that yes, was because that, that was the challenge. Her. And I feel like poor old daddy Dave being upset that there weren't <laughs> elders. Like, let it go. Let it go, man. It's also, you got to let it go. Maybe if you make elders more interesting and not like all of them have to be like uh, crouched over uh, to be. Uh. Sorry, I was I was hyping you up. Go say the thing. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. If maybe you didn't have to, like... <laughs> Your elders are boring as fuck and have no flavor to them. And you should feel bad about bad, it. And they all have bad posture. You don't immediately, like... <laughs> I wish, like, you could pick how bad the curve was. Of the yes! Back. You don't immediately get scoliosis when you turn 70. So yeah. some never get that way. And I just want that adjusted. 
Since there isn't a young adult and adult, maybe like elder and like, oh my god, elder. (laughs) (laughs) That's what they call it. Elder and oh my god, how are you not dead? (laughs) Yeah, how are you not dead, elder? Coming soon. The next game pack for you. $20, please. Elder and oh my god, elder. (laughs) Elder and how are you not dead, elder? Oh, God. It's true, though. And, like, that's... I wish that one of them had come back with today with, like, well, like, you wouldn't... She was a model who's hunched in half. That's stupid. Mm-hmm. Age diversity. Get out of here, Grandpa. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, like, that's ridiculous. Elder and elder gameplay might have been at the front of his thoughts because I think that's... They were working on the knitting pack. Except they didn't, didn't add anything for Elder specifically. <laughs> they just added knitting. They, they could rock in the chair. Yeah, they didn't. Oh, everyone can rock. Toddlers can rock in the chair. Come on. That's ador- <laughs> that is adorable, though. It is adorable. But Elders get one thing for knitting. One exclusively Elder thing. They can remember things. Which, in what real they- life, is a lot harder for old people. <laughs> so do your research, Dave. <laughs> Also, wouldn't it have been funny if on the toddlers they made a thing where the toddlers, like, they rock too much and they accidentally kind of launch themselves out of the chair a little bit? That'd be hilarious. They land the toddler. Fine, like, they're, they're fine. They're like, rock, 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 boom. I thought you were going to say, like, have toddlers remember, like, reminisce on yesterday. <laughs> you know how when you talk to little kids and you ask them, like, oh, when did you start doing ballet? And they say, oh, I've been doing dance all the way since I was four and they're like five. It's like, oh, oh, all <laughs> way back in time way when you were when. four. I've been doing it my, almost like most of my life, I my think. My whole You're life. Like, it's like, oh, four seconds. Great. Good job, Gertie. It's not, it's not wrong. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, but we yeah, get she off track. Under, she, she didn't, she had a lack of body diversity, which The Sims 4 does have. You can have a lot of different body, except tall and short. And you can have a lot of body <laughs> diversity. Types. Except except for one very key aspect of, of height <laughs> and diversity like, in bodies. Thickness wise, you can have a whole bunch yes. of different people. Did you notice sure. one of the, the, one of the guy with the crop top? I always my favorite because he had a crop top on and he was like chubbier, but I was like, he still got abs though. That's important. He still got did, those yeah. abs. Yeah. Yeah, and that lipstick I, though. I think she also used the lip the same lipstick twice in her. Which could be you could ping that for the look. Like yeah, if they, I could see if they brought that up and like, oh, I see repeated. It's like no, no, no. It's because it's for both. It's for all the things. It's my I look. guess. Uh, that's one that I disagree with the judgment, but I think they were both pretty damn good. Yes, but I do. I. I understand why they gave that to Llama and why sure. they kind of dinged Cow Planamore. And then the Storyteller Challenge, this is when, because at first they were like, we're going to send you home for the day. It's like, they didn't do a lot this day. That's interesting. <laughs> but that's because there's a da-da-da-da, a thing happened. A stupid thing that happened. <laughs> what happened, Millie? <laughs> <laughs> Steph Sim decides to leave. She quits the competition. Um... Because her fucking friends got eliminated. That's what she last, said. Those were the last worst. week. But then they bring her friend back to replace her, <laughs> and it made no fucking sense. Yeah, I think, I think it's literally her anxiety got the best of her, and she they just can't say I this competition made me too anxious, so I need to leave because that makes the competition look bad. So they had to phrase I it. Yes, then- but like make it a positive story about like self care and like knowing your limits and like taking care of yourself and and like a positive story about living with anxiety you know what i mean like don't blame it on other people (laughs) she's very like a friends person um she's hella close with the english summer and they're always hanging out and from the beginning of the competition she kind of was like um what the fuck because she wasn't paired with her friends oh and the her two friends got so, paired together that also sucks it wasn't yeah that- yeah. <laughs> yeah so i i can see why she would leave because her friends had to leave and she also felt like they were the better simmers um than her so she didn't feel like she deserved to be there with her friends not being there so i think it was a very big loss opportunity yeah someone else should have been put there from the get and like I, I want to support her, and I want to, I want her to to feel good about the choices that she made. If it were me, I think it's. And I said this in the Discord. Like, if you're gonna be on a show, 
like mm-hmm. be on it for the show the people who are like oh i'm you know i don't want to like no if i were on a reality show i would be that asshole who'd be like i'm not here to make friends, friends. that's <laughs> who i am that's who i would be and like i love the both of you but if the three of us were on a team together or not on a team together and one of us got eliminated like go i would i would immediately switch to i am rooting for you not like i'm mad that you're still in the game you know What I know about reality television, based off of watching it too much, if you're competing (laughs) and you get eliminated, you don't go home. They keep they keep the eliminated people in just another non filmed location because they can't send you home. Because if you go home, yeah, like two days after you got back, they know you got eliminated. So all eliminated people, no matter what the show is, they kind of just keep them in a rejected house somewhere. They bring they brought them all out at the finale. Yeah. So it's not like she didn't get to see them. She just so she felt just, bad. Like, decided to stay in her hotel room. and <laughs> Yeah. I do think, I don't blame her. If she didn't feel comfortable staying, that is her prerogative. But uh, yeah, her friend did replace her immediately. And also put her team at a disadvantage because you throw somebody With in. no hesitation, too. <laughs> She's like, I know I replace you, but like, bye, bitch. <laughs> and also, they had to know the entirety of filming episode three. They had to know that this was going to happen because, A, the storytelling challenge went last and it went on a completely separate day. So I'm get I'm betting money that dur- sometime during the filming of episode two, maybe beginning of episode three is when she told the producers and like, I'm out. And they were like, you know what? Take a day. Like, let's cut it here. Go home. Think about it. And then tomorrow, we'll we'll make a final decision. And she did not come back. She's like, bye. <laughs> and again, here's the thing. I'm sorry, Doctor Gluon, but if it were me, up knowing that I would have to go up against him in a skill challenge, I'd be like, bitch, bring it on. Yeah. After what had been shown, I'd be like, I might be able to take it. But then it's a twist because it, then it becomes his. His forte, yeah. His forte, thank you. That's what I was looking for. It's like, <laughs> oh, we're going. Oh, it's because I wrote it. That's why. <laughs> why is it yeah. in my head? Oh, because I read it off of your homework. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> this is why I need notes because words leave me. Like, I wrote this literally 20 minutes before we recorded, and I already could forgot it. This is why I had to type up notes because I forget <laughs> important things <laughs> like the word forte. But, like, we did kind of talk about this already, but, mm-hmm. Caitlin, what, what are your thoughts on kind of the how each of them did? Welcome back, Linga Schumber. Time to do some improv. Hope you're ready for that. That sucks for her. I was like, I feel bad. You're brought in and immediately have to, like, perform. Like, it's not even, you don't get to, like, watch other people do stuff. It's like, and you do some improv right now. Enjoy. Like, oh. Improv is hard, man. Mm-hmm. I hope they let them do, like, improv warm-ups or something beforehand because that's first thing in the morning you can't do good improv first thing in the morning except maybe dr gluon because he was perfectly fine he eats and sleeps improv his whole life is one giant improv oh this the challenge was given on the fly walkthrough of a nightmare house with uh dave running the controls of the house daddy steer for me um (laughs) so here's the thing (laughs) I'm recording this when my boyfriend is not in the apartment. Let's just make that very clear. Um, he despises like every use of that word. But anyway, um, something about us. Um, I make him edit the episode. Make him edit the episode. <laughs> I feel like God, I, like that. Who built that house? Who? There were two different houses. First of all, yeah. Who did that? They're amazing. Why don't you build all the? I don't care. Not an EA building. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you build all the houses? Maybe there won't be staircases missing or whatever. (laughs) If this person built the houses, we're looking at you, stranger. I think that was mentioned. uh, Realm um, of Magic, right? I think somebody brought that up. I think Dave brought that up in the reunion. That didn't add anything to my life. Um, (laughs) He talked about like the family that went into the game. So I guess it's like in the eco pack. I don't have that one yet. So which oh, I should. One second. Let me look. This is research that we should have done, but we didn't. So we're going to improv it today. Uh, See, we do improv. I this know. podcast <laughs> is a giant improv. Are you kidding? I never said I, I said improv is hard. Not that I couldn't do it. <laughs> I 
I think our team actually, like team, this team llama would actually do fairly well on like a good day. If there's a Hell bad yeah. day, we might end up crying. Sure. But if we're like mentally prepared to be stressed out, we might be okay. And like if coffee is provided, always stressed out. Let's let's just put that out. Correct. I am stressed out one hundred percent of the time. I just, I feel like I really would have had fun with that one. I would have done similar to what either of them did. I think if I had like a, mo- like if I had gone second, I, yeah. See, they kept her in a separate room, right? Yeah, so she wouldn't know. So she wouldn't I, this know. This was also when I was like, I could probably do this one, but we also like host a, we, po- we ad lib podcast. Right. Thing. Like, so we're like, we're fine. We can talk. I feel like on my best day, I would have gone in and done something very similar to Dr. Glue on that, like, fake, happy realtor. I would have loved to do, like, an accent. Like, this home, I mean, the style is just beautiful. Oh, my God, the rats. Anyway, like, just play up. But, like, he did it. I think he did really well. And I was very inspired by his take on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't remember which house. Oh, it's uh the Greenberg family. In the eco. In the eco lifestyle pack. Eco, yeah, life. I did it. I said it right. Uh, as uh, Mary and Blossom, as well as their home, were designed by YouTubers Plumbella, Sim Improved, and the English Shimmer. As Team Gnome as part of Challenge of the Sims Sparked. That's right. Sims. Ooh. I actually remember going into that get into that house and being like, "This is more." There's more in here than there normally is. For- so, and that was set. So that's what he said on the on the reunion. He was like, "We got a lot of positive feedback from that before the <laughs> show went out." So he was like doing the like yanking his collar, like, mm, "Yeah, uh, <laughs> we we were like kind of having to take credit for that because we couldn't say anything." It was noted that it was better than your normal things. Uh huh. Interesting, Dave, <laughs> Daddy, listen. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> No, I won't stop because one more thing in the reunion that did nothing added nothing to my life. The conversation did either of you watch the reunion episode? I didn't get time. I meant to, then I forgot. I fell asleep when I meant the day I meant to. Caitlin linked it and then I was gonna click it and I fell asleep. (laughs) We like sleeping. Yeah. I don't know. Uh same. Just don't get to do it a whole lot based on my dumb brain. Um, but I watched it and it was like, it was a virtual reunion, um, because we are in the time of COVID. Um, and it's like everybody, it wasn't everyone in the cast that's notable, but, um, go watch it. Definitely get your own, uh, perspective on how awkward it was, It'll but add nothing to your life, but go watch it. <laughs> Dave did say, he, he's like, I do want to apologize because I called, I called Simlissi's, uh, bus build adequate. And got a lot of, like, shit for that. And I just want to say, like, it was, of course, above adequate. And it, you did a really good job, blah, blah. And Sim Lissy was like, mm-hmm, okay, thanks. <laughs> like, she was, she played it so cool. And, like, there were many opportunities for her to be like, oh, my God, don't worry about it. And she did not. And good I was like, her. yes, girl, do not let him, do not cave to his apology like it wasn't it was an apology but like she didn't let him get away with anything and i was living for it it was super cute just didn't go with the challenge her bus was like adorable would love to live in it like seemed super like a lot of stuff going on loved it not just adequate and at like a later time in the reunion she like piped up as a comment to something and was like it was adequate (laughs) (laughs) i was like oh it was so good (laughs) maybe we need to go watch Simlissy more. She did I, not get to shine with her yeah. sassiness through the show. Maybe one of our pat- one of our patrons was like, maybe you can get somebody to uh, tell their stories. And I was like, we're recording it today, so probably not. But maybe and, we can. <laughs> we don't know who the fuck we are. Yeah, maybe be like, here we have um over ninety episodes of this. Could you just please come on? And, like, no one listens to us. Just tell us all the dirt. Give Excuse us all me. the salt. We had a yellow plum bob on an episode. That is true. Excuse me. If you're I listening to this right now, you probably it's probably not out yet, but spoiler alert, we're getting yellow plum bob on our freaking show. So oh, this we're is a also a big deal. Is that all for our episode three mm-hmm. and, uh, coverage? Llama one. Yeah, because it was overall <laughs> It was like a compilation of everyone's points. So yeah, like we did a weird point system for that. Yeah. Every you judge got a point points. to award. 
you could have just had three points of been like this was the better build this was the better thing but no you had to make it a nine point system it all came down to kelsey and peach k she did not like she was like this is rude i did not sign up for this and i keep wanting to say her name is chelsea and peach mm-hmm. <laughs> So the finale. So nobody got eliminated because it was it. just a yeah. skill challenge. But just, just a skill challenge, gearing up for the finale. Maybe what the entire show should be, like episode three. But that's neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. We won't tell you how to run your show, but you did it wrong. Well, so, and that was the feedback that was given in the reunion. Like, they kind of went around and asked, like, how would you do it differently in future seasons? And it was actually Dr. Gluon who agreed um, and said, like, I really think, like, the skill, like, head-to-head or, like, make someone who's a storyteller try to do a a build challenge, like, switch it up and and really hone in on just one skill at a time, I think. There's a lot Mm -hmm. they could have – there's a lot you can play with. Mm -hmm. Play with life, but maybe if they get – if they do a second season, I would like to see them change it up a lot. There is some – actually, having watched this, there's something here, but this was I agree. (laughs) The final finale challenge, we're back to our teams, and each of them have to discuss their styles of gameplay and come up with a cohesive story that includes all three of the team members' experiences in a story about how they all play with life. That's... <sighs> Do you want... I can... Okay. So Team Llama decides to focus on X Mira Mira's story and focus on bullying and people telling you that you can't game because you're a girl. Team Cowplant played with an idea of going, to, there's two people in your head, one who tells you to express yourself and one that tells you to suppress yourself. But then and how do you deal with that? Those are the two stories. Okay, big, go. The big thing here is you were supposed to talk about each person's mm-hmm. playstyle, not just a one person. Mm-hmm. Um so, Melly, so <laughs> who do you think should have won based on their final stories? Um, Cowplant. Caitlin? Cowplant did it right. I Caitlin? liked Cowplant's story more, but I think I know why Llama won. Me they too. They specifically mentioned Sims in their story. Cowplant didn't. And I think that's what got them the win. So, uh, I, I also think Cowplant got the win should have gotten the win um but i see what you mean caitlin and it goes back to something i've said a couple times in this episode like more abstract visual storytelling versus like a a well-written scripted story Mm -hmm. and i feel like it was a little bit weird and redundant to have to like say this is about the sims because the method of storytelling is the sims you know what i mean right? no shit it's the sims yeah We're playing the sims yeah. how many times do we have to mention the sims <laughs> i just really liked how cow plant not only did they show all three members story they did it in a way that seamlessly blended it into one story but they separated each section using the voiceover which i thought was really like really smart and i, I don't know really hard both of them made me cry. I will both. I was cry. I was crying. Not expected to cry during the show, but I cried. It was very emotional. They, everybody felt, and every both teams should be proud of what they did because it was. They both got the emotion across that they needed to. And um, unpopular opinion. Go ahead. I <laughs> hated Lama's story. Did you? Um, yes, because it's such a cliche story like every single simmer has that same story and has made um a let's play on it or revolve the character around it you're a girl you got bullied for it and you play video games that's everyone's story i feel like they could have touched on so much other personal struggles this is also where simlessy got nothing like her not story Neither did the other guy. I, I can't remember his name because he's irrelevant. But <laughs> he didn't get anything That's in it either. Point. If anything, they portrayed him as the bad guy for being a guy. Yeah. Like I will say, fuck? I don't actually think I've ever gotten bullied for playing games. I, have- I haven't either. I think we are in a generation where it's very accepted that girls also play video games. And sometimes we play better than guys. Like, I grew up playing competitively in a league. 
and not once did I ever get bullied for it. I never got bullied. I had people seek me out to be like, I have like people like I remember like eating lunch during like uh I was at work and I was like at my like 15 minute lunch break and like scarfing food down and like a coworker that I talked to sometimes just sat down across from me and he just went, I really want to talk about World of Warcraft and you won't make fun of me. Can I just talk about it? And I was like, <laughs> sure. And he just just wanted to talk about world. He just wanted to talk about gaming. Because he, he knew you played or because he was like, oh, a chick who won't know what I'm talking about. No, he knew I played and he also knew I wouldn't make, he knew I played video games and he knew I wouldn't make fun oh. of him for being, what is that? That is the thunder rolling. Game. No. <laughs> <laughs> but he knew that I played, but he also knew that like he could, because people at work would come to me with their interests and be like, I'm nerding out about this thing. Can I talk about it? I'd be like, sure. Go for it. I'm excited. If they were going to focus it on Mira Mira's, I feel like they could have used this as a way to advocate for people of color. Yes, that also too. And that would have been a way better story. Um, something that is a struggle that does not get spoken about as much because mm-hmm. there's so much suppression in that community. So for them to cop out and go with a girl that plays video game it was complete bullshit for me and they should not have one for that. So I don't I don't think it was a cop out so much as a they were trying to to be true to what the challenge was asking and in doing so they felt like they had to water it down. Um and, and I agree. I I went into the episode rooting for Llama because they kind of had that underdog story and I really mm-hmm. really love Mira as a competitor, as a content too. creator. Um but She's my the real, like star of the show for me. Yeah. This and entire thing. Mm-hmm. And in, like, a reality TV show sense, like, she had to kind of claw her way up and be heard. And if if that were represented more in their final story, that would be great, too. But it, I think in terms of, like, showing a cohesive story that was about all three people, Cowplant really did it better. They did. Mm-hmm. And it's just the, the nitpicking of the rules is what did it. But that's also reality television. That happens a lot in, real, like, competitive television of, like, this was technically better but it didn't do these rule things. Like, yeah. it's been, to bring it back to Top Chef, there was sometimes like, hey, you would have had the best dish, but you were still plating after the buzzer went off. So you can't, you can't get the win. So sorry. Yep. It's and, on other people. And like, that would be fine in a world where skills are much more defined. I feel like the way they did this first season, it didn't, it didn't really, they enforced rules around skills that, the production team kind of made up like it's just not it's not how everybody plays i think they assumed a lot about how everybody plays and that's just not the case and i don't know what the right answer to quantify that but i think i think they just i think they have to focus more on like how how do you as a player stand up in your overall playability not just not just building or storytelling like it's all storytelling all of it is storytelling Mm -hmm. you just i think they separated it out too much to interpretation Mm -hmm. kind of game yeah and you can't pin people against a game that's meant to be it's not a cookie cutter game not everyone plays the same way so you can't compete against people in a game that's not there's no set way to play it and this yeah. is an outlet, and you're too, like, this is an outlet for a lot of people, which also made the first episode a little hard to watch because I was mm-hmm. like, I don't know how I feel about people stressing this bad over what's supposed to be like a fun out of like we we say back to the real world because we can yeah. go into our imaginary one and it, watching people stress out about it took me until the second episode to be like oh let me get my popcorn because the first episode was like oh, they're stressing and I'm stressed for yeah. them. And this game is not supposed to be like this. This is a relaxing game about it's sometimes art. Murder, some, yeah. It's an art form and it's self-expression. And to put judgment on self-expression, I don't know. I I really want this concept, concept to succeed, but I, I think they're looking at it just a little bit wrong. Just a little bit wrong. I think they can get so there. So to ask that question, um, do you think there needs to be another season? Does there need to be anything? I mean, I don't know. I would like another season. I would like to see how they could fix it. I don't want the same thing. They need to. They they need to do what The Sims Four is having some. They what Sims Four actually did 
they there are issues and they're fixing them and i hope that they take this complaints that they're getting and the, the feedback they're getting and make something better because even just melissa when melissa said like just pick one per- one person can do it all my brain went no and then she explained it and i went oh you're right so i said if- no and then i said <laughs> yes <laughs> then i went haha so i'm wondering if there was just nobody on that team who just went yeah there can be who there there was no pushback on that yeah yeah, I don't think a lot of thought went into the actual show, and they were like, "What's a quick way to make money and put all these summers in one room?" I mean, I don't want to completely demonize it. I just I think it's people tried to make it who didn't get it fully. I wanna I wanna congratulate the attempt. I really do. Yeah. But I think it's the same way that I treat the game. Like these are good ideas. Good idea. Poor execution. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do better, and I hope that they can do more with it because they're like i didn't think this would work we can when they announced this i think we all went this is gonna be a disaster can't wait but watching it there's i think my stance was more like oh if this is great great if it sucks great Great. (laughs) i didn't have high hopes for this but i think i didn't know this was a thing until you guys started talking about it and i'm like what 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 excuse me I think there's something here now, and if they decide to continue, as long as they change it up, it should be, I would be willing to watch a second season. Yeah, me too. There's a foundation now. Um, Let's build on it, take people's feedback, but actually listen to us, EA. Yeah. They have a really great track record of doing that, so I'm sure it's going to be completely (laughs) fine. You know, super, super quick turnaround on all their fixes. But one of our patrons asked, "Would I think we brought it up a couple times, would any of us be willing, do you think any of us or any of our other uh, Under the Plum Bob team members would go on to the show? I'm down. I think Ju- Julia would do really good, I think. Julia would kick ass. And plus, like, can you imagine I like her? root for everyone. I, th- I could probably do the cast stuff. A style- if it was just a stylist thing, I think I could do it. I just, I wouldn't want to be pigeonholed into any one, you know, thing. I know it's how a lot of people play. Like, I'm just a builder. I'm only this. I only do this. But, like. Now that your wings are expanded. uh, Yeah, I've learned so much more about building recently. And challenges have stretched my my gameplay style a little bit. I don't know. I I feel like it's, it's kind of like having an art competition and going, you can only use acrylic paint but what if i want to sculpt you know like it it just like let it all be available you know Mm -hmm. i think if it was a sims beginner challenge kind of thing where you take people out of their comfort zones and make them explore different options by making the competition things that you are not good at then we have a good thing going yeah that's what i mean who never you played people who... and made them do these challenges. Yeah, like, if you make a builder build, then that's not fun. Like, we know you're going to build something great. What's what's the point of that? I don't want to watch that. Yeah. Give me the drama. Change it up. We want drama. We do want... There was... And I think they were kind of... They really clung on to the Dr. Gluon situation as their drama point, which meant yeah. that he got a lot of, a lot of the negative editing. Which, that's not fair for him. I agree. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's a nice guy. Yeah. But, like, based on this, I wouldn't watch his streams. Mm-hmm. And I do think that's also a, a... Because everybody else is so friendly that he was the only villain they could give. And it was mainly just he wasn't picking up on a social cue of his teammate being not happy with the results. Give so me a also... villain. Put little Simsy on this show, and then I will root for a villain. <laughs> She doesn't. She, she takes no prisoners. She I, look. We've said our pieces I about she her. It down. I bet she did. I I would. I'm willing to bet that they approached her. She doesn't have time for that shit. She doesn't have time for anybody's BS. She's, less she She's like, give it a test run. <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll think about it for season two. I'll, I'll win the second <laughs> season. I won't go on the first. I do wonder. I wonder if they would even allow us. I wonder if we're just two kind of salty bitches. For, for their for hey their man, TBS if they want challenge. drama, if they want they they searched for drama, 
if they they don't have to look for it if we come on the show. I'm just saying. I'll be calling bitches out. I'll be throwing shit at other teams to be like, I don't know, someone's throwing stuff. I don't know what's happening. Like come behind their computer like, hey, hey, <laughs> your builds look like trash. Your cast is stupid. Look at your sim. You pick- <laughs> That's an ugly sim. Your sims you are ugly and you should feel bad. <laughs> That's me behind everybody's computer. And legit Huggy asks, like, any idea when and where it was filmed? Do we think wardrobe was provided? Oh, I don't think I don't think wardrobe was provided. Is that a Dr. Glue on's hat question? She said that was a super important question. And I was like, that'd be that would take up a lot of time for them to have to fit all those people with. Like, I know that's their job is, but I don't like those kind of t- like maybe the judges but i don't think the contestants yeah judges he's trying to say that they all have poor taste <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they look too comfy to for that to have been a wardrobe provided i think it's filmed in san francisco i think it's filmed at the either the buzzfeed office or the ea office i'm not yeah. sure which one probably the buzzfeed one and i mean if it's a buzzfeed production most likely and probably, I think probably they were working on eco lifestyle, so it's got to be like yes. last year, mm-hmm. like fall last year maybe. My God, remember last year? Remember outside? Remember time before COVID? <laughs> In conclusion, <laughs> it sucked. I'm just kidding. I enjoyed it a lot. I- I enjoyed it for all the reasons that you love reality show. It's fun to hate watch. It's fun to love watch. It's just, it was fun. And I, I would watch more of it. Good idea. Poor execution. But if there's another season, hopefully they learn from this disaster and make it better. I think, yeah, there's something to build on here. I'm excited. If they continue, I will watch. And I am excited to see what they do if they do that. Oh, Julia had thoughts. One second. We give it three, three and a half plum bobs. Julia said, Dr. Red Hat is the worst. So I think that's just. <laughs> uh, she also said, Sim Guru Ninja is a hard ass question mark. And three, I feel like they a hot too ass. Much. I mean, sorry. A hard ass. I, a hot ass. He's got a hot ass. Mm-hmm, Dave. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wait, Melissa, that? shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's never going to follow us if you keep doing this. <laughs> well, he tweets at us. Sometimes when I'm... he's But he's followed like every other person. And he hasn't followed us yet. And I don't know what to do. After but 10 years in a relationship, you just openly objectify other people. <laughs> it's fine. It's completely fine. And it's three, not fine. I, I feel like they expected too much from these creators with the rules and the time limits. Yeah. Yeah. I do feel like the, the time limits were adjusted for episode two. I think they, they course corrected their mistake very quickly. I'm assuming. That's just me assuming, though. I don't actually know. The only way we learn more is uh, by seeing a second season. So EA, mm-hmm. BuzzFeed, we're ready. Three out of All four. Right. Three and a half out of five plum bobs. Yeah, that's about right. Who, three green give- plum bobs and one yellow plum bob. I didn't give up on it. Like, if it was super bad, like, I didn't watch the second season of The Glee Project. I did watch the first season of The Glee Project, but the sec- first season upset me, so I didn't watch it. It's not The Glee <laughs> Project bad. But it's not sh- America's Next Top Model good, so. It's not Top Chef. <laughs> That's the standard we need you to rise to. There was no makeover in this show. There really wasn't. Why wasn't there? Think about that. Ugly to pretty? Oh, that would have been a great skill challenge. That would have been a really good skill challenge. Anyway. Would have been sub- they probably don't want to, like, body shame it's anyone. Kind of anyway, yeah. What you, cut, what cut you this whole. done yeah. is, like, here's, here's, like, a sim with nothing, like, absolute, like, bald, blah, 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 and you give, here are three traits and their aspiration. Make a sim. Yeah, I would have loved to see some of that. Anyway, we're going way long on this episode. <laughs> I'm going to do the, the plug super fast. Does that work for everybody? Any, like, final, final, final thoughts? Do better. We believe in you. That's it. Do better next time, EA. <laughs> do. That's how we end everything. Do better. Do your Kanye best. <laughs> we believed in you. We fought for you. You were the chosen one.
That was a that was a meme from America's Next Top Model. Sarah <laughs> Banks just yelling. We were all consistent. rooting for you. <laughs> I have never yelled at a girl in my life like this. Um. <laughs> anyway, love you, Tyra. Call us. Yeah, be on the show. Thanks. Don't call us. She's problematic. <laughs> She is. Wait, tell me after the recording why she's problematic. Anyway, <laughs> editor, God bless you. We are Plum Bobcast on Instagram and Twitter. We are Plum Bob Podcast on Reddit. I'm a train and I'm a keep going. We are under the Plum Bob Podcast on Facebook and Tumblr and under the plumbob.com is our website. You can email us using a contact form there or just reach out to us at under the Plum Bob Podcast at gmail.com. Subscribe, rate, and review us on all of the things, Apple Podcasts particularly. Thank you, Caitlin, for putting together all of these notes um, for this episode and helping us gather our thoughts. Um, Problem. Uh, we love all of our Sims community fan sites. We didn't use a ton of them this episode, but bless up. Kisses for Carl. Feel better. Um, and thank you, our listeners, for tuning in once again to hear us bitch about uh, about Daddy Dave and his his show. Cut every time I say daddy. <laughs> just cut every single Deleted. time. Can you just bleep it out but replace it with like increasingly like worse language as it goes? <laughs> just bleep. Oh my god. That's so good. Uh, we are a train wreck. Uh, we love you. We're so glad you're here. Um, we're going to go back to our real world, which is still inside, and uh, watch the reunion that didn't add anything to my life. I'm going to watch Top Chef. That's what I'm going to do. That's a good idea. I'm going to eat my lasagna and watch some Top Chef. Amen. The finest of cuisine. (laughs) Yep. I put that in the oven. Hell yeah. She cooked. (laughs) Bye, friends. Bye. Bye.